Good afternoon, everyone. Um, from the men and women of ATF, our condolences go out to all the victims. As you know, a week ago, we had this uh, very tragic event, um, massive scene. Obviously, we had two loss of lives. Um, so our condolences go out to everyone that was affected. Um, I would like to thank uh, our partners here, um, both the Houston Fire Department and the Arson Bureau and the Houston Police Department uh, Homicide Division. Um, they made our ability to get into the scene and work the scene and the interviews efficient and effective. Um, they were great partners this week, so I want to give praise to them. Um, since Saturday, the ATF National Response Team uh, has been on the scene. Uh, keep in mind that team consists of certified fire investigators, certified explosive specialists, bomb technicians, um, fire protection engineers, forensic mappers, chemists, and digital investigators. In addition to that, we can bring in any other specialists that we need um, when we get into a scene if there's something that we're not familiar with. Um, they put in 1,400 man hours, uh, developed uh, 50 leads, and have completed 48 of those 50 leads. Uh, the two leads that have not been completed are DVRs that were damaged during the explosion, um, and we're still trying to work on those to get those downloaded. At this point in the investigation, we have no indication that would lead us to believe that this was a traditional criminal act. And what I mean by traditional criminal act is um, no indication it was an arson, no indication it was sabotage, or no indication it was vandalism. What we do know is that there was a fuel air explosion. Um, the fuel was propylene. Um, the the uh, likely ignition source was arcing within the electrical system of the building normal arcing within that building. Uh, all electrical systems have arcing, whether it's at your house or in a business. So when that fuel air mixture got correct and it wasn't too lean, it wasn't too rich, once there was some kind of arcing in the system, that spark set off this explosion. What we do also know is that once a day, the company that filled the propylene tank would get a notification of the level of use of that tank uh, and regular use was 67, six, I'm sorry, six or seven percent of that tank would be a normal day. Between 1 a.m. on Thursday and 1 a.m. on Friday, 29 percent of that propylene tank was used. So we know that the leak started sometime in that 24 hour period. Um, they only get notification once a day, so it's impossible for us to narrow it down uh, any more than that, but we know it was in that 24 hour period. Um, they did get notification just after the explosion that the tank had gone below 30 percent, which is normal procedures for them, so they know to come fill that tank. Obviously, at that time, they did not know there was an explosion. Again, I want to reiterate um, that we have no reason to believe that this was a traditional, intentional criminal event. Um, our national response team has responded to over 850 major scenes. They've been on every major explosive and arson scene in the country for the last 40 years. Um, they're used to seeing these kind of scenes. Um, and their expert professional opinion uh, is there's nothing that leads us to believe that this was a criminal event.